Over the last few years, a new buzzword has been going around the data world of data mesh. And just a quick Google search will leave you with a ton of different articles of what is data mesh? What are the principles? How do you use it? And we're even at a certain point where tools are incorporating this concept directly into the product. And while a lot of this is still getting played out in real time, in this video, I want to break down the general concepts of data mesh so that you can better understand what people are talking about and potentially apply this to your own company if you feel it's the best fit. So here's a high level view of what the idea of data mesh is trying to accomplish. And data mesh isn't a technology. It's not a tool. It's more of a framework that organizations are attempting to follow. You have your different sources like usual, but rather than a centralized data team being responsible for all of those integrations, instead, each domain is responsible for their own sources and for setting up their pipelines to land it into a central, let's say, data lake. When we use the term domain in this context, we're talking about different really departments, you could say, of a company. So you might have a domain for accounting, maybe for HR, for operations, it could be finance, all sorts of things. And that's the idea here of siloing those different groups instead of having everything within one data team. So when you hear the word domain, think department or business unit within a company. If you had a batch process, each domain would be responsible for configuring their own sources within that tooling, within that infrastructure and landing it into the data lake. And the role of the data team changes from being responsible for handling all this logic and all these integrations. They're instead responsible for setting up the infrastructure and the tooling to allow others to use it. They might set up the data lake, the warehouses, handle permissions, all that stuff, but it would be the responsibility of each domain for actually setting up and creating the logic for all of their sources. So the idea of the term mesh comes into play because you're going to have a bunch of different domains working in separate spots, as well as domains creating their own data models and their own analytics. And they'll each likely be pulling from different domains to get their own data, to mix and match things together. So instead of always coming to a centralized data team to resolve issues. If there is an issue with a source over here, it would be the responsibility of this domain to investigate that issue, to resolve it and change any of the piping behind it. You get this whole concept of a mesh where everyone's kind of owning and interacting with each other. And so the pros of this are that the people who know the data best are the ones building the pipelines and handling the logic. So they are closest to it. And it removes that responsibility from a centralized data team to know everything. The downside is more of the technical aspects of things where it might be asking a lot for certain domain owners to set up a lot of this stuff, monitor it well, and make sure things are sticking to standards. There's a lot of variables at play here. I think it's good in theory. It remains to be seen if this is something that catches on. It's definitely become more popular but I wanted to present this to you and so that you're familiar with it in case it does come up. So we've established that data mesh is obviously a popular concept right now and teams are looking to implement it. The truth is I haven't even seen this fully implemented yet in my experience at a company. I know teams are trying to make this possible, but it's definitely a larger project to get everybody on board with this. So it's going to take some time, but what are some tactical ways to implement this? And there are a lot of great articles that can give you some advice on how teams are doing it, different approaches that you can take. One clear example I've seen is with DBT, which is a tool I use quite a bit and one that I talk about on the channel a lot. And I recently had a client specifically asking about this. And what I find interesting is that DBT is embracing this completely and establishing this as part of their product. And so at a high level, the way that they're approaching this is that it's not a single product, but it's a pattern. And that's really what we're talking about here. And basically they're allowing you to create a bunch of different projects and reference each other, but they're making it more formalized. Whereas in the past, it was kind of a workaround using packages and all these different things to connect projects together. But there's been this trend towards different teams having different projects and then maybe having a single you know, enterprise project or something like that. So just to tie it back here, you might imagine each individual team having their own DBT project and then having rules and governance around it. You could have teams referencing each other's projects. You can have contracts between it, which is a separate conversation. But all of this is an example of how a tool like DBT is implementing this directly into their product. And we might see this come up in different tools as well. And I think this does make the most sense for a data transformation focused tool. But I'm curious to see how this concept gets applied to different tools and different components of the data stack. So that's going to do it for this video. I hope you now have a better understanding of what data mesh is all about. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you at the next video.